code number. This is for the board. 1976 pound. Opens the door. Clubhouse that was installed in 2015. We drilled the well 705 feet deep and we installed a submersible 15 horse motor and it is pumping now 80 gallons a minute. Here's where the electricity comes into the pump, which is submerged. Right. This looks like a relief valve here. Is yes, that right? Yes, that's a relief valve. And then there's a pressure gauge on the back side right. for the line pressure and a valve for catching a sample. Sample tap. And then what is this? Looks like an air line. What this is, is this? An air line to, so you can put uh, compressed air down to measure the water level. And then two, well, right now it doesn't have any pressure on it. Mm -hmm. That's normal. We have no air here. <laughs> okay. Will that change? We're going to bring a, a, a nitrogen bottle up here to use that. Uh, okay, it'll be padded with nitrogen. Okay. And then this is the uh, breaker box for the electrical? No, that's not a breaker, just a junction box. Junction box, okay. So the breaker is on the back side. And then we just got a typical outlet and light switch so you can see in the dark. Okay, so now let's go around to the back side. On the back side here, this is electronic uh, water level measurement. It's here. It's new. We installed it this year. The breaker box is here. The meter that measures the production is there. The rest is insulated piping going into the ground. It goes over to the ground storage tanks. Okay, we got a couple of uh, valves here. I guess this is a block valve and a bleed valve. Right. And uh, that way we can block the line that goes, water line goes to the other part of the system and bleed off any pressure. And we have those secured with a cable and a lock. That's the official. And what is it reading right now? Oh, it's hard to read. You had to put your... 163.33. That's feet above the, the well, or yeah. the pump. The pump. The lower uh, indicator indicates feet H2O, feet of water, I believe. Okay. That's above the pump. This is well number one, the original well that was here since 1985. We repiped it, and it's the one that has the packer down below. Okay, so it also has a gauge on it, I see, and a couple of uh, looks like lines for air or nitrogen. It has a sample valve here, looks like a block valve over there, a relief device. I don't see a relief device. Well, this is it right here. That's it there. It goes out the top. Okay. And these are the ones going down to the packer. Hold the packer in place. Okay. And that is a high pressure nitrogen line? Well, well we'll use the, the packer's inflated with nitrogen, right? No. It's uh, the system pressure. System pressure. Again, let me tell you what I think on that. The input side, you'd hook up with nitrogen to flush all the water out of the packer. And that would deflate it so you can pull the pump. Okay, and then this black plastic line, that, what is that? That's the line for the uh, water level. Oh, the water level indicator. Again, it's got a, a, a gauge on it. Okay, and then the box there is a... Just a junction Junction box, box like on the other one, okay. So did you record it or should we start over? The roof is removable so that if you ever had to do maintenance on the pump, uh, and pull it, it, it takes it off and they pull it, the pump out for repair. Looks like it's just attached with some screws, okay. And on the back side of this one, do we have anything here we need to talk about? Well, that's the pressurizing device. You are taking pressure off the high, tra high pressure tank and run it in there and that inflates the packer. Okay, so. This will be moved inside the building someday. It was put out here temporarily during construction. I see. Okay. All right, we're moving on to the control room. Start, uh, I guess, up here at the top. While he's opening that, there's a little schematic here that shows the layout of the uh, 
uh, artifacts here in the lot, the storage tanks, the building, the pressure tank, etc. The um, operator rules and guidelines, a set of keys, looks like a little capture bin here, and then you're going to tell us about the control system. Okay, control system, we put in a 19, in 2015, we put in a new control system, it's Turner Control, and this mechanism up here, it's is there a time delay for each of the motors so that they don't all start at once? And this is the, the motor saver for the whole system. So this is a motor saver for the number one well only. And this is the magnetic disconnect for number one well. The, uh, other than that, this is the air compressor used to put the air blanket on top of the high pressure tank. And this is the level controller for the uh, high pressure tank. It was installed in 2015 also. Not under the contract, but just due to maintenance. Um, yes, that's about all we have here. We installed new lights when we did the construction this year. Other than that, it's... Uh, Pretty well the same as it was, except for the new equipment here. Tell me about this hose coming in from the chlorination unit. What is this? That's how you add chlorine to the system. When the, when the pumps come on, when the wells come on, opens this solenoid valve. There's a check valve. This is a venturi that brings chlorine gas from over the other side and mixes it with the water <laughs> as it fills. So water going out of the line here and out of the building goes over to the storage tank. The ground storage tanks. There's two ground storage tanks. We'll see them a little bit. We put in a new one in 19, 2015 and uh, the other one that you'll see is 20,000 was also put in in 2002. And tell me about the high pressure pumps here. We have two pumps that take the water from the ground storage tanks. They're 10 horse, they bring it in, pressurize it up and put it into the high pressure tank for the uh, distribution to the system. Okay, and it looks like the water comes in from the tank there. No, it comes in from there. From here, That's up section. from underground, okay. And it looks like both pumps are opened up and operational. They alternate their use. And if one fails, the other one will uh, take over. If you don't keep up, both of them will start. Okay. What is that, J-box? Just a junction box. Okay, junction box. Okay. And then these are the booster pump uh, cutoffs. That junction box brings water over into the chlorine storage uh, build, side of the building. And the the uh, for running the air compressor. Okay. I guess we're ready to move to talk to chlorine. That we have the chlorine gas in a separate part of the building so we don't contaminate uh, the operator and control room. Yeah, and but by regulation you have to have a wall between you and where the, you store <coughs> the chlorine. In the chlorine uh, storage section you have a vent valve that's turned on before you open the door to eliminate any chlorine gas. In there you have your bottles of chlorine gas. You have a scale that you use to record daily what you use so you can tell whether you're using anything on it or not. So they take a daily reading, except right. on weekends. This is the pressure regulator of the chlorine gas. It runs gas through and measured to how much you use it through the rotometer here. This chlorine gas is, uh, tubing is what you've seen uh, coming in the other side to the venturi. Okay. This is the what's called the soft start control mechanism for the number two well, the new well that we put in this year. It's a uh, system that allows you to use plastic pipe because it starts the motor slowly and uh, ramps it up. 
has the other controls to keep from damaging it as much as possible. This is the auto dialer. We picked it up at alarms for uh, and sent out to the operator. It automatically dials when we have an alarm here as to when the emergency generator comes on, when the pressure becomes low, and when the, the story, ground storage tanks become low. This is, who, who does it dial? It's, it's selected. The operator comes in and decides who it dials first. Usually he puts himself on first, then goes through the whole list of people in his in the operating system organization. PGMS. PGMS, PGMS team. Right. <coughs> so it can it goes it can go through six different people uh, numbers can be dialed into it. This is a junction box to for the probes from both of the ground storage well uh, tanks to uh, and they go from here into the turner control and start and stop the uh, motor and also send a signal to the auto dialer that we're half full of uh, water on the ground storage tanks. This is your tank put the, in this year. And it's got a, uh, a gauge on it indicating the pressure on the tank and a sampling valve. It's actually tells you, it's measuring the pressure actually, but it's a red in feet of water above that point. It's really level. Right. The red line is full, and when the pump so stops. There's, yeah, there's basically two uh, scales in here. One's PSI and then feet of water. And as you pointed out, it shows uh, 20, about 20, almost 21 feet of water and about uh, eight, a little over eight and a half PSI, I guess, or 8.3. And the red line is where the water well shut off. Okay. Which is about the height of the tank, as I think you explained to me at one point. Should be 24 foot. Okay. And then this, of course, is just a block valve to isolate the system. Right. And this valve is the outbound line? That's the inbound line from the water wells. Inbound from the water line, outbound. Okay. And your water line goes into the, both tanks at the same time, unless you choose to isolate one from the other. See a directional indicator, but okay, that's good to know. And then similarly, we have another storage tank here. This tank was put in in 2002 during the original bringing up to code. This does have an indication for suction here for the input line, similar gauge system, sampling valve, block valve. So that is suction to the booster pumps. Oh, to the booster pumps. And that is the suction to the booster pumps. They come together, manifold together, and go over to the booster pumps. Oh, the two come together, one right. line goes to the booster pumps. And then the water coming out of the tanks, it goes through the booster pumps, gets pushed into the high pressure tank. High pressure. Time out. With these two tanks, they're usually both open all the time, unless there's a problem. Right. So the level's the same in both of them, I guess. Right. And it's just the backup volume, it's the double the volume. Right. Then if you have a problem with one tank, you can isolate it and just run on right. one tank. And one tank is how much, how many 20, days? 20,000 gallons in each tank. Which is about how long for us? How many days? We run, generally run anywhere from 12 to 20,000 gallons a day. Okay, so we have a, one or two days uh, storage normally, or two, or one to three days, let's say. Well, the water in the ground storage tanks has already been chlorinated, so it's, uh, you don't want to have excess storage because of the uh, your disinfectant. It'll It'll dissipate. Reduce itself. Yeah. Good. Okay. This is a high pressure tank. The old tank that was put in 1985 sprung a leak in about, I guess in 2006. We bought a new tank at that time and installed it. You usually keep it about half full. The top portion has got compressed air into it so that you maintain a uniform pressure at all times on your distribution system. Here's a level indicator right here. Indicates, as you said, about half full. Padded with nitrogen, or where does it... Where does it's it compressed air out of the compressor. In the out of the compressor. Right, okay. Got a relief valve on the other end and a black valve to uh, remove it. What is the... Uh, oh, that's the lines coming in and out, I guess. 
Well, what is this on the top? That's the air pressure lines, right? Right. Okay. What you bring in air into this one, and that just gives you the top level on the probes inside the building that a lot tells them how full to make it and when the booster pumps come off and on. Okay. And then this is a pressure gauge over here indicating about 70 pounds of pressure inside the tank. Which translates to the water pressure we see on our water lines. Right. Normally we run lower than that. We're having a leaky solenoid valve right now so the air pressure is going to have to be repaired. And who does safety valves have to be checked every so often? PGM has them on their list or? No. We have to remind them? There's no schedule. No that schedule. I know. No, there should be though. Huh? We should look at it. Probably into should be. Any pressure tank should have some kind of That's right. legal There's every two. Pressure it's... relief valve. Yeah. Uh, the tank the itself's on the schedule. The exit is blocked. Yeah, the, you have to look inside this tank every three years to look for corrosion. And, and who? This who? is a discharge, right? That should not have any obstruction. Yeah, but you get wasp in there if you don't do that. At 100 pounds of pressure, it will blow that little piece of tape yeah, off. Yeah, okay. All right. I'm just saying. Who has it on their tickle file to... Is it you, or is it PGMS? PGMS keeps the file on that. Okay, so they know when the three years is up? Right. At least they did the last time. Okay. <laughs> this looks like just a man entry over here for inspection purposes, my guess. If they have to ever go inside. Right. Inspect it. And now let's talk about the... Uh, sure. Okay. This is the emergency generator, a 30, 38 kW. It's designed to operate for to operate the whole system. If we have an electrical outage, it automatically starts and stops upon loss of voltage. It runs once a week at a te for to ensure it's running. It runs for 15 minutes right now on Tuesday. You need to adjust that. It runs off a of propane. Propane tank over there has enough storage in it to run for approximately three days. The storage tank has a buried line that apparently comes over here to the regulator. And this looks like the regulator that goes into the, the uh, power source that generates electricity. Is there anything that we need to worry about here? Yeah, that it operates. The operator comes in once a day and he reads the meter to determine if it's ever run or not. Oh, if there's been an outage, power outage. Power outage, or he can tell whether it's exercising properly. There's a series of green lights in there that tells you it's ready. And if any of them turn less than green, it means it's not available for service. Our operator checks that, whether that is all green, and this is the hour meter that tells whether it's exercised during the, during the week. And where do they keep all these readings? Is it back in the, the pump? pump uh, the it's on his uh, daily uh, sheet, that is monthly sheet. Which is so in the booster pump right. building? Hold it. It looks like there's also a battery here. I guess that's the ignition source for the generator. Right. And uh, is that a cooling system? Yeah, just your antifreeze. Antifreeze, okay. So just like a car engine, this would have to have some minimal maintenance, battery, we fluid have, checks. We have a contract with Blanco Electric right now. They come out twice a year to do a check on it, and they do our maintenance work. Okay. And then let's take a quick look over here at the propane tank. I guess we have a supplier that periodically checks this. No, we don't. This. <laughs> Since we don't use any... Since we don't use enough gas for them to do a, a regular monthly check, right now I'm looking at it and making sure it's not low. It we appears would, to be 60% full, yeah. We would call him out and have him filled up. Looks like a dual regulator system, one here and one there. And then a relief valve. Maybe a relief valve, uh, maybe the fill valve. One of these is probably for relief. Okay. When there's problems, obviously PGMS is the first line of defense, but sometimes it's 
something that you've been handling, like electrical hiring a contractor, or what other suppliers are key that we'll need to kind of know about and have their phone numbers for eventually? Uh, that, that the PGMS doesn't take the lead in automatically. Well, we would order the propane. Okay. The maintenance on that right now is handled by me going through Blank Electric. Um, other than that, uh, PGMS normally takes care of it unless we have to remind them or ask them to do it. Now, they can do it all, probably. I mean, they have electrical, they can't, but then can they go hire the guy, or do you normally then right. jump in? When we have electrical control problems in there. They'll hire, usually they got a couple of spot, uh, people they use. Okay. One of them is Central Texas Maintenance, and the other is Hernandez, whatever his name is. Okay, so they do have a relationship with subs for electrical, right. too. They, they may call Wisnet and Lyle out, because they have the capability to... If we weren't here and the pump went down, right. they would probably call us up and ask if we want them to do it or we could do it. Right. And over the last couple of years, what's the last couple of instances where you've had to get involved? Oh, geez. Well, I remember uh, the booster pumps for a while. We had to put those uh, slow start controllers in there because the booster pumps were both coming on at the same time and tripping the breakers off. Is that right? Something like that? Yeah, something like that. We, we had to put the timers in. And that was a lot of electrical troubleshooting that was over PGMS's head, as I recall. Right, and we, we would have... Uh, I'd usually come out and see what uh, Central Texan Maintenance was doing or helping them do it. But yeah, we were having troubles with the ground storage tanks and the booster pumps coming off and on at the wrong time. We also had a little trouble with the controls inside. We thought it might be temperature related because this building would get pretty hot in the summer. So we're trying to insulate it and put a, a temperature control system in the control room. What the bid, you know, we were getting pricing on putting insulation and hardy board siding on the outside, installing a air conditioner heat pump on the, uh, to, uh, to basically control the temperature inside between freezing and below 100 degrees. And we were installing Trying to install a, a reflective roof on top with new uh, roof metal on top of it. So that's the concept. We'll see what the price is and whether we can accept it or not. And then another thing is we're trying to make the switch between the well number one, well number two a little smoother. One of the issues we're having is the amount of chlorination is different between the two. And with a single feed system, it's not easy for the operator to make the adjustments, so we're considering making a change to the chlorination system. Right. We had a couple issues that we're also getting bids on. One is putting in a secondary uh, chlorine feed, one for each well. Uh, we, but we wanted to maintain one, one scale system, which creates somewhat of a problem. We had the supplier of the chlorine out here to uh, give us an idea of what can be done and it'll involve putting an additional solenoid valve in the chlorine building and whenever the chlorine feed comes on the, it selects which rotometer or measurement of the chlorine goes to which well. Uh, in addition to that we wanted to select the way we did and that with only one chlorine feed it was difficult to select which pump we were running. You had to take the turner open and uh, make the manual switch inside that and we want to eliminate that. And in addition to that we're going to bring in the failed the alarms inside the emergency generator were uh, not hooked into the auto dialer and we're going to try to get that accomplished. And low level switch into the old storage tank and we're going to put that in this time also so that no matter which tank you're running the controls off of, it'll uh, give us that alarm. When the high pressure tank, the hydroponic tank, failed on us, it brought the discharge of the booster pump out here and tied it back into the distribution line at this point. So the line that comes from the high pressure tank to the distribution system is tied into the booster pumps at this point. It used to go into the other end of the tank and came through the tank and went this way. 
Oh, that was a uh, galvanized pipe that had to be taken out because it was starting to leak. So that's what that big valve on the bottom is? Basically, that's, that's the, the discharge of discharge that tank. From that tank. On it goes the, through here. On the old tank, see that t uh, valve over there? On the old tank, it had a valve on each end. And it came out of the booster pumps, down the fence, came back through the pump, the tank. It was... But it was all galvanized pipe and they were starting to rust out and there's really no need to run the water through the tank. We're using the tank as a pressure control. This is what I wrote in my original letter. If you look at the where when we had the big rains, mm -hmm. we're starting to wash all the rocks down to the tank. You need to probably look at doing something about that in the future. Put in a retaining wall or something? Retaining wall, whatever. Oh, the specs, right? Yeah. The rain washers can go into the high pressure tank. Mm -hmm. There's one line that comes in. Right. And it comes in where this valve is, right? Right. And the outflow from the tank comes up right here. No, yeah. it's uh, the same valve in and out. Same. same valve in and out. So there's a tie in. So the water that keeps the pressure on the system, on our lines, uh doesn't actually even have to flow in here if it doesn't have to, right? It doesn't flow, it floats. It floats in there. Right. Up and down. So we do get some circulation through here. I'm concerned about the chlorination or residual water getting stuck in this tank. If that thing basically feeds the line out, how do we know we get turnover inside the tank? Well, it drops say about a foot. Down to here. I mean, the pumps don't come on, and pumps oh. don't come on until the level drops. I guess. Until the level drops, and then the pumps so. will come on and basically right. go that way. It just goes both ways. It goes both ways, and then. Uh, okay, so basically, we got a pretty good turnover because the consumption out of the tank is so high before that triggers a refill. Yeah, the, the other line you're showing here, this goes to the the probes inside the building that uh, controls the. Booster pumps coming off and on. Okay, they trigger the pumps to right. turn on and off. Okay. Because you, your probes are sitting in this thing. You've seen it in there. You've got air on the top side, on the top side, and the water coming up the bottom side. Okay. So it just floats up and down with the level in here. That's okay. what that big tube is against the wall. It has probes in there and shuts, it turns the booster pumps off and on. Okay. All right.